Hi, uh, I'm Amit Nambiar. I'm a computational designer. I studied architecture, the building kind, and then I moved into like programming and trying to use programming for creative applications. So the whole presentation is like more design oriented. So if at any point if I'm not like clear or specific, feel free to talk. Uh, let me tell you quickly what I mean by computational furniture. So this is the idea where uh, I write a script which converts human parameters like age, weight, people, that people who are not familiar with programming or like logic or that sort of stuff can associate with and convert it into a meaningful piece of CAD geometry which can be good for fabrication for, so that people can make furniture for real. And it's on playing. So uh, like between this and this, this is just a screen grab, there's a logic which translates these parameters into geometry. And it's giving a bunch of information which is useful for fabrication and also like the design itself. Um, and this right now running is in an environment called Rhino and Grasshopper, which is kind of popular in the field of architecture and computational design. Uh, it gives you a programming environment to program 3D geometry. Uh, it has a bunch of like CAD operations and a kernel inside which allows anyone to do this sort of stuff. So this makes it easy, but it's constrained to a desktop environment. So that's the fabrication part that I was talking about. Like you take that vector file which is created on the fly feed it into a CNC machine, which is basically, uh, like you can think of it as a 3D printer, but just two-dimensional, and you cut pieces out of plywood. And you assemble it in a certain, lo like in a correct way, so that they all interlock and provide structural rigidity. And then you end up with pieces like these, which are really good to sit on. And some more examples. Uh, so that is how I started off with this. Like, this is, doesn't yet relate to JavaScript. Uh, I started that like some, a few years back, and I made a bunch of samples, and then was experimenting with the idea. But it was really cool to like, like interested to try to make it more accessible, and that's how I thought of JavaScript. And then I sort of like doing the same process, but on the web, in the browser. And this is a live demo of search. It's the same thing that you saw. Um, so it gives a representation of what the furniture design would look like. And the logic which I was mentioning earlier, which was in Grasshopper, uh, has been like, it makes it easier to do it in JavaScript instead of, or uh, instead of uh, Grasshopper. And it convert, makes this translation of the logic into this. And by clicking this, it gives you the file that you would need for anyone with access to a CNC machine to fabricate it. Uh, so this project, how I started off with, has grown a little. And then now it's become more like a web app with a bunch of different moving components, which allows anyone who's interested in this sort of idea to experiment and play with this. Uh, and so like when I started off with this, the idea was to make anyone who wants to make such sort of furniture, make it easier for them to do it, make it easy for the makers that who, who fabricate the thing to actually take it and make it out of plywood. Easy, easy for them, like they shouldn't need to know the complexities of JavaScript or furniture design or any of that. And then also make it easily accessible. So like what the web kind of fit perfectly into this. And this is the part that I'm talking about. The stuff that I'm working on is like stuff within the dotted dotted line. And these are independent people who, who I think like might work with the platform. And the, the design that you saw earlier that was like a prototype, which I made because I've been working on it, but that could be anyone. And the idea, is, the idea of encoding furniture design as a JavaScript file, those are these people, that's what I assume. And the makers are different people who can just like download a file and get it made and fabricated, and whoever wants it can use it. 
Uh, so a little bit about how it's been going. So it's been going fairly okay. Where like it's go it's like more more and more people are taking interest in it, and there are different parts of it, right? Some people who want to make such furniture, some people who want to fabricate it, and everyone has a different uh, takeaway from it. A bunch of stuff that I think it might lead to is like reducing an entry barrier for furniture. Uh, this is like the more design-oriented stuff. Like right now, it's kind of difficult for furniture designers to start off with fabricating furnitures because you need a studio, you need to line up with like f production facilities and all of that. This might help. Like this kind of approach might reduce that. Uh, in within aspects of furniture design, like I think this is far more interesting for me personally. It opens up like a new dimension of exploring furniture. Like conventionally, furniture is a thing which is fixed, designed at one point in time, and everyone's using it uh, but when you are uh, able to program it you can think of like different ways of how you want to modulate the proportions the ratios the different parts of the furniture to make it uh, like either specialize it for something for someone specifically specialize it for a region or any other creative applications like you know, I'm not sure how it could go and then the idea of like everyone being able to or uh, everyone having access to the same quality, same standard of furniture, irrespective of where you are. Like the whole logistics part of it, it breaks down because when you're uh, like calling for furniture, you're not ordering it, like ship it from somewhere in the world, but you're just sending over the file to the closest maker around you who can make it for you. And this is kind of uh, like I've bootstrapped this heavily and a bunch of different technologies that I'm using to try to keep this up. So if for a designer, a lot depends on like using, understanding Git, how to make it work. Uh, it's, like it's not central, but it's just like for to collaborate with the community, I would say. And a bunch of front-end libraries. So the app and everything that you saw runs purely client side, nothing on the server side. Uh, and it's like this semi-hacky way I put together to make it run. Yep, and like that was the main chunk of my presentation, which wasn't really focusing a lot on the technical bits of the JavaScript because I made it for another presentation. But the idea of uh, this part was, I perceive, might be something useful, like valuable, where like you don't need servers or anything to do this. Basically, every like all the processing, the CAD engine, the kernel happens on the client side, which is not like CAD kernels are pretty computationally expensive. So it doesn't usually run on the front end, but using a bunch of libraries that I earlier mentioned makes creating geom procedural geometry on the fly, like verb knobs is really cool to work with, knobs geometry, which is like curvy and flowy and more aesthetically appealing, I guess, more conducive for the human body form. Like you can imagine straight lines are not that comfortable. And the idea of using 3JS to render it and also extract the information that you need to put it to a fabrication file. Because in the earlier slide that you saw of fabricating it from just a CAD geometry, so that happens on the client side on the front end. Uh, and the whole idea right now is essentially like I'm piggybacking off of GitHub for like hosting, free hosting. And the app runs on, so like there's no real hosting that I'm doing. It's just like a bunch of files put together and how each file talks to each other and coordinates broadly speaking as a community. And yeah, that's the meat of it. So anyone who's interested in furniture design or JavaScript and that sort of stuff might be cool to hear if you ever try it out, what you think about it. Thanks. <laughs> yep, and if any questions, I think I have time. <laughs> Say something? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah, this would have been better. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you just say that it was easier to use than a grasshopper? Sorry? You said it was easy, easier to use than grasshopper? Uh, you know? As a designer, like yeah. grasshopper is a whole environment, right? So it lets yeah. you a bunch of things. Uh, like it, it's a visual programming environment. 
So people who are not familiar with scripting makes it easier, but the logic and the underpinning is the same. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Can you just show some code? Yeah, that's what I'm trying. This is a grasshopper environment. Um, this is the scripting environment for grasshopper where you're connecting components. It's a visual node-based editor, which makes modeling 3D, uh, well, it's a way to do it, I, I would say. Uh, so like starting in architecture schools, like it's an introductory thing to get into programming and computational design. So it's very familiar. Grasshopper itself is a plugin into a 3D application called Rhino which is used for 3D modeling. And this is what a parametric script looks like. And this is what a design file that you would write in JavaScript, but executing more or less the same things would look like, which is like JavaScript. Well, this is the part where you're defining the input variables, like the stuff that you see on the right, how the designer would convey to the user how he lets the specific design to be modulated, which the app can read, process like a UI for it, and the user can interact with it. And within the same file is the logic to convert the design into 3D. So this is a very simple one. So that's why like here you're just creating geometry, applying material, creating the mesh. This is the part where it lets the designer specify how they want the sections to be made out of it. And it should be such that they intersect and are forming a stable structure that anyone sits on. So like you can think of this like the API, I don't know if I can call it that, but that's how you would design a design. It's more like an interface, not an API, sorry. Does that answer your question? Okay. If I would change the dimensions of the furniture, um, can it also uh, maybe add an extra slice for support or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you, see here. you see this guy? Like, so that's set up by the designer to do it. And the idea is like, this is my design, so I created it with a logic that shouldn't be more or less spacing than like 12 inches or not 12, like eight, I don't remember, some few inches. But that depends on whoever designing the furniture to make sure that it's stable. Thank you. Um, how does a designer specify materials for the maker? Are there certain restrictions so that when it gets sent to a maker, they only make it out of certain things? Yeah, so the, the, like the framework that I've been playing with have so far primarily worked with plywood because that is stable enough. It depends on a lot on what's available. And so far, I would say it is just plywood of a specific thickness. Uh, well, the thickness is customizable depending on how you want the furniture to be. But... Also, pro like thinking of it in aspects of safety, like uh, people who haven't experimented with furniture might try to do it with acrylic, which is which works on like small pieces, 
But if you scale it up for a bigger piece, then the structural stability isn't enough, or it snaps, or it's just more brittle. So, uh, and the material that you saw in there, that's like just for visualization. That isn't the material. They were still thinking. Sorry? They were still thinking. I can, okay. I can see it. Can you, can you show how um, you interface with 3GS? Uh, so 3GS is the library that I'm building on. Uh, the idea is like this is 3GS running as an app within the, in, within the web app. My app is specifically extracting geometry, providing a platform. So it's a library for me. And I'm using it as a library. It's using a bunch of operations within 3JS and the community around 3JS to extract the vector geometry, to modulate lines, makes stuff easier. But the like stuff you see left of this line is 3JS. And then in 3JS specifically, what, what is the geometry you're using? Uh, well, this is one piece, right? Uh, this was my inspiration, which I started off with the earlier pieces that I was showing you. Uh, the idea is like limitless. There's a whole design gallery and like if people are submitting more designs, it could be anything. But for this one, I start off with a specific profile. So this is the inspiration for the geometry. Either show this one and or this one. It doesn't work. So this is something I did for a hackathon where the idea was I, fetch, I was fetching, it was a proof of concept thing. It was, I was fetching information about a person's genetic data from like services like 23andMe. This is a competitor, I guess, to them. And using that to customize furniture. So broadly figuring out how a furniture looks, how it should feel, and how I can customize it, that's kind of the design logic that comes in before you're making furniture, or before you're writing code, sorry. And then you figure out the mathematical relationships between how you want different parts of your furniture to move and how they, like how, with respect to each other. And it also like corresponds with human anatomy. Like there's a whole library of anthropometric data about how body proportions should be and all of that, uh, which is like the uh, ideal approach to do that is like you take that and pick an average or pick an like 80 percentile or the, your target audience for a furniture design and you customize it for that. But doing it live, like dynamically or, or procedurally, lets you modulate that for a specific time person without constraining your design to limitations like that. And then you figure out like the proportions that you want to be. And this is what the CAD file, the fabrication file looks like. This is what goes to the CNC guy. And basically he just needs this and the material thickness and money. <laughs> uh, so these are kind of the inspiration. So it's, it's not like about a specific geometry, but how you think of furniture, I would say. Um, did you implement an algorithm to do the 2D layout of the uh, uh, laser cutting parts? Working on that right now, okay. as I say. Because that's, uh, that would be an interesting algorithm. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I have like something working, not published or anything, but should... Maybe you can show something? Uh, I like, I don't have it right now, but you could check back or like you could reach out to me after and I can talk to you. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for contributions? Are you like, what is the next step where maybe we could help? Oh, definitely. So this is the page that I was talking about. Like everything is open. The idea of making such furniture, like the idea is not super complicated, I would say. Like if a company had to do it, they could definitely do it. But bring it out in the open where there are two parts. Well, one is the maker network, people who can fabricate such th things. 
and that's most of the people that you saw earlier who who have reached out and connected with me and there's a bunch of designers people who are interested in making such furniture so i've had like regular interactions with people who want to do an experiment with this but that's like really more keen and like furniture design is a part of it i would also just like just like to hear people who are using who try to experiment this experiment with this or how the how the app is working for them so far and like starting it is i've made a how to getting started guide which starts off with a basic geometry and is meant to tell you how you should go and the idea is like if you clone this repo all you need to really worry about is just changing this file the design.js file and that's where you set up how you want the design to change the logic that you embed which is all around here uh, and like this one has a more complicated design logic let me see if i can find that how much time do we have left okay we we can see <laughs> four minutes okay um i don't know how to find it i need to log in So this is the design logic for this one where it's slightly more complicated and you start off with a framework of points which sets it in a 3D environment well it's one approach to do it or uh, you figure out the points that you want to move you specify those create the lines between them and a little bit of uh, 3D like 3D knowledge would help make the geometry so this is the starting state and then i modulate these based on the user inputs which is age weight or it could be anything and then knob geometry helps you create smooth lines between any given points like not always smooth but and this is the process of adding it into the scene like adding it into the app Uh, yeah so this might look complicated but like once you figure out the framework to do it that's how it would be there's another article that i can't find this is not I'm going to ask a tricky question because maybe I missed it before but did somebody else beside you made an object with this sorry did somebody else beside you made an object using no. this no not so not anyone so far yet so that's the first contribution that I'm most keenly looking for <laughs> well I mean, it's a great room we have so I'm pretty sure somebody somewhere is going to do it right yeah and yes, like I getting started noting. is not easy difficult like getting started part is not difficult but how you want to modulate furniture that's more about furniture design but it's like furniture is one thing that i've thought of we always make like small things cup holders birds nest and all that sort of stuff which is easier and like no one's going to fall if you make that uh, there was a pretty pretty bad presentation this morning about augmented reality um, done by someone mm -hmm. so that